the moon was a uh, connection with harvest and uh, great bounty, and they were afraid that if they tried to do anything prosperity-wise when the moon was not shown, that they would bring bad luck upon themselves. Um, now, as I was saying, she is often seen tripped for anything. Um, actually, one of the interesting fictional modern tales you'll see her in is, have everyone here heard of Neil Gaiman? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Neil Gaiman, um, one of his popular story, or series of stories is The Sandman. Uh, actually, if everyone here is like interested in mythology and uh, Grimm's fairy tales, and but a, actually the old pantheons and stuff, if you read Shad uh, Sandman Chronicles, he puts a lot in there. He will put uh, the Greeks, the the Egyptians. Um, he does obscure information, and they will be like kind of peppered through the books. Well, one of the main characters in these stories is actually Hecate. Um, but what's interesting is they'll present her in various forms. Um, there is actually one of his series of books in connection with Sam and I believe it's called Witchcraft. And it was a series of three, uh, it was a series of comic books that they put into three graphic novels. And it is basically the idea of this girl who, she was part of a tribe worshipped Hecate and they were basically invaded by barbarians and she was she and her sisters were basically murdered by them they were uh, raped torn apart totally humiliated and killed well when this raid was going on she prayed to Hecate asking for vengeance of some kind but what ends up happening is that she starts uh, being reincarnated in uh, through time and each reincarnation Hecate, who actually they show her as three women, but they all talk at once because even though they are shown in three forms, they are of one person. And they, you'll see them, when you read the comic books, you'll see them saying, I, they'll say, we. We, we have decided this. We should do this. And even though when they're talking to each other, they're still saying we. And, um, but the story basically goes, she is reincarnated and each time period and it's always trying to have that vengeance with that the the barbarian the leader who has caused such death upon her tribe and the the hecate at first is like yeah we shouldn't get involved with this human business and yeah it's great that they're worshiping us but yeah we shouldn't get involved but they finally get talked into it so they try to help out the spirit as she's reincarnated and it keeps goofy now. Like, um, basically at one point, she totally messes up and ends up, I think, getting herself killed and not the guy, the next life, it, it just never works out until finally the third book where they finally get right. But it's neat, interesting seeing Hecate both conversing with her in human form, trying to, every time basically they have to explain, okay, this is what happened to you in this past life, and this is why you have to do this in this life. They go, oh, okay. And then they see the, her die and go, oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do that it again. Didn't work. <laughs> no, that, that didn't work, uh, try again. But with them, time passes so differently that it's like 200 years can pass and it's just a minute for them. Um, but it's still frustrating to them. <laughs> but um, but you see her in the maiden and the mother and the chrome form, and finally the chrome form is when basically she has her vengeance and she gets a guy. But what's interesting too is you see almost it loops back where the barbarian, because the idea is time is not linear, is reincarnated back in the time when it all began, and he actually is reincarnated as one of the women who ends up getting killed and raped by the barbarians themselves. So it all ends up the ultimate vengeance is he ends up in the same place he had the woman in. So I'd say still read because it's an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
say it serves them right. But that's, I would say, one of the more interesting modern takes on Hecate through Neil Gaiman. I mean, like I said, this guy, he researched the hell out of out of mythology, out of Grimm's fairy tales. I mean, you'll see him cross culture, Egyptian pantheon, and then throw in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream into the whole thing, and actually get a good story going out of it. And um, I mean, anyone who's interested in Neil Gaiman for American Gods, that's an amazing perspective on the idea of our modern take on deities and what they still continue on, even though we don't pay attention to them as we used to. But um, like I was saying, with the modern witchcraft, she is looked upon more these days as a prone aspect as, because of that connection with death and decay and <coughs> returning, to the, uh, returning to the earth and everything. Uh, she is also looked about as a deity of change as well. Uh, a lot of people will talk about how uh, she is the one if you call upon when you want something to change in your life. You might want to be careful when you call upon her because she is like the battering ram to that wall of change. She will change things whether it's very painful <laughs> or not. Uh, but she is the, the one that when you're standing at your metaphorical crossroads and have to make decisions, she will basically kick you in the ass and go, make a decision now, or I'm going to force you to go either way. <laughs> um, she's usually looked about as the, kind of like, not quite the sweet old granny, <coughs> more like the one that will tell you you're being dumb, whether you like it or not, even though you're in tears, you're like, but, but, you messed up, fix it. <laughs> She's the one that will tell you to fix it, basically. Which is the one that's totally honest. Yeah, that is the main thing, which I sometimes find a bit annoying with uh, some of the pagans where they'll soften the DT and try to make them look nice and happy and like, oh, it's great. And I'm looking at it like, that's not Hecate. <laughs> she is the brutally honest one. She is the one that will tell you when you have become stagnant. She is basically a DT of change in a sense. And she still retains some of the old stuff that was originally connected to her. It's just looked at it differently. I mean, it, even though she is not associated enough with life, it's still a change. Even a, a form of death is still, you're not, that's not the end point for you. It's just something else is moving on beyond that. But she shows <laughs> it's going to be painful. It's going to hurt like hell. But then there will be something else beyond that. But she, so it's more the metaphorical than just the physical death. Any further questions? Like I said, I went blah. <laughs> I lost my voice. <laughs> uh -huh. You hope that I can actually get PowerPoint running tomorrow. <laughs> Was the PowerPoint going down the reason that Ryan tweeted about your hopes and dreams being dashed? And it, it was partially that and partially having, when I was writing up some stuff, it was pulling hair at that point. It was just like, please. Because <laughs> it's like I was doing research on some things. I was doing research on a couple of the ghost hunt locations. And one of the problems was everyone kept saying, yeah, it's haunted. It's totally haunted. There is freaky stuff going on and I'm like great what's the details mm -hmm. and just read reviews and people going oh my god it was so haunted yeah. <laughs> that tells me <laughs> how haunted was it <laughs> <coughs> so yeah that was more of me going oh my god I can't this be over now mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh no, actually, uh, the old town hall was really cool. I finally found some stuff there. Nice. Sweet. <laughs> so it'll definitely be a, quite an interesting uh, investigation there tonight, really. And, uh, but uh, for me personally, with Hecate, I've actually have always had interest in her. Um, I mean, if any of you all know, what my store itself is called Hecate's Crossroads. And, I I developed it actually back in high school. 
it was one of those projects where, okay, create your own business. So, you know, like it was basically a, a teaching method they wanted to do with like numbers and, and um, balancing and basically creative writing. So they're like, okay, develop your own business. And I'm like, well, I always wanted a cult shop, which was an interesting conversation with that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I basically created Hectay's Crossroads. It's like, okay, if I'm going to have a shop, this is what it's going to be. So even though it was supposed to be just a project, it was still interesting. This is like, no, this is really something I want to do some days. I want this. So I've just kind of held on to the name ever since. Even though, like, I think Chris was talking to me at one point going, why Hectate's Crossroads? No, I'm just going, no, it's you. I'm like, it's something I've been attached to. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it kind of has multiple meanings to it to me, too, because uh, in my in my life in general, I've always come to another chapter in my life, but basically a crossroad of like, I have to either go this way or this way. You can never backtrack really. You never can go back and go, okay, we'll just find another route. It's always, do I go left or do I go right? And so it's always felt like when, with the cult shop, it was like, okay, oftentimes when people go to these shops, Yes, most times they're just collecting the usual supplies and everything. But two, sometimes people are going there because they have a decision to make. They're, they're trying to do something in their life to change it. So it's like basically they're coming to the shop. They're coming to a crossroads of like, do I do this or do I do this? And both of them will have consequences of some kind. And it's to me, it's this interesting metaphor for a business in a sense. And I'm actually hoping it'll be more than just a call, but also my art. But um, so that's one of the modern things with uh, Hecate is herself, that she is, she, even though she's so focused on the nocturnal aspect of her in the modern paganism, um, you can use her at any point in time, day or night, but so many people have connected her with night because of the crossroads, because when you think of crossroads, you think of dark and spooky night. When you go to the crossroads, you're going to see ghosts and goblins and the devil, maybe. Um, but she is not meant to be such a frightening aspect. She just looks like that because of she is a guardian of the gate. She is a holder of the keys. She is only as frightening as you will make as you will make her to be because she represents. A decision you might not even want to make, but you must. So, of course, when it's a decision you have to make, it is scary, it is frightening, it is an unpleasant thing to look at. So, that is why she usually looks like that because she represents a choice you have to make that you don't want to, but will eventually have to. Any further questions? Oh, come on, I just tossed so much information. <laughs> <laughs> I still have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> but does anyone have any questions in general? Um, not just with Hecate, but anything paranormal. I mean, like I said, she's actually, if you work with paganism, she might, she is a good entity to possibly work with when trying to connect with spirits, trying to form uh, more of that psychic connection. I mean, she was the one where uh, one of the folk tales was you you didn't want to be at the crossroads at night because one of the stories would be basically that's where the ghosts congregate, that's where you will see them and hear them, and that's why you keep I keep saying about how the whole bane of the dogs was almost sign of her because at the, the city limits near the roads the, the wild dogs, the stray dogs would hang about because also that was near the area where the graveyards would be, where they would eat the dead. Basically, if there were any bodies shallow enough, they would basically dig them up and eat them because there was, that was only food they could get a hold of. So you would hear them pretty much at near, near dusk to night, you would hear them baying and gnawing and barking and everything. and. Most people would associate, oh my god, Hecate's around, she's near a crossroads, and she's got the whole fleet of the dead with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 